This is Network 18. And you are watching CNBC TV 18. All right, that's uh, commodities. Well, the, the macro uh, really has been the big problem for Indian markets. And just when it looked like it was sorting itself out, this big rupee depreciation, along with the fact that crude prices have also risen, has again uh, you know, played spoil spot. Uh, Subir Gokan now joins in from Brookings, India. Uh, Mr. Gokan, hi, morning. Uh, good to have you. Thanks for your time. Uh, you know, what have you made of this? Thank you for having me. Uh, what, what have you made of this approach on the rupee? You know, we've seen the currency depreciate quite a bit. We've seen, uh, you know, the, the RBI, RBI attack it. We've seen the government attack it. Uh, but, but do you think they're addressing uh, the, the right problem? You know, what they're doing right now is, you know, some piecemeal approach, uh, uh, some currency futures trading, you know, putting some curb on that. Uh, telling oil marketing companies to buy dollars from just one bank. Uh, do you think all this is enough or some more concrete measures are needed? Well, I think the, uh, the, the approach has to be two-pronged. Uh, as we all know, the shock was a global shock. Every economy was subject to the same shock, which is essentially uh, the announcement by the U.S. Fed uh, that they would start uh, rolling back on their uh, QE uh, exposures. Uh, but the impact has been quite different across countries and the key differentiator as again I think is quite obvious uh, when we look around us uh, is the size of the current account deficit. Uh, we have that problem and that is being compounded now by a build up, a large build up of short term debt uh, over the last two years. Uh, so it's actually a joint problem. There is, there is a double exposure uh, on the external front as a result of this combination. Uh, now, the, the sort of enduring way to deal with this uh, is to address the current account deficit. That's really the cause of the problem. Uh, all of the other approaches, administrative intervention, some of the things you mentioned uh, that were done yesterday uh, about putting limits on uh, bank proprietary trading or uh, margin requirements on uh, positions in the, in the exchange uh, on exchange traded uh, derivatives. Uh, all of these will supplement, uh, all of these will sort of help contain uh, movement, very large amounts of movement, uh, if, but, but are not solutions in themselves. Uh, so unless there is some signal, uh, a strong signal that uh, the current account issue is being addressed, uh, I think the problem persists. So you can contain it to some de degree and wait for inflows. Uh, when we go back, uh, over the last uh, two years, going back to August 2011, uh, the rupee recovered when, in two, uh, two instances, the rupee recovered when there was an announcement by either the ECB, uh, which was in December 2011, or the Fed, uh, September 2012, uh, which actually pushed capital back into emerging markets, pushed capital flows back into emerging markets. Uh, we don't obviously expect that to happen now because the whole thing has been precipitated by an announcement that the reverse will happen. Uh, so we really have to depend entirely on domestic factors and I think that's, uh, that's the pressure and that's the kind of challenge that the government has to deal with. Mm. Dr. Gokarn, good morning and thanks for being with us on the show. Uh, we did notice that the gold imports fell quite a bit in the month of June, uh, perhaps because of seasonal factors uh, like the wedding season, etc., you know, that is put behind us. But how much relief do you think that could give to the trade deficit and eventually to the current account deficit as well going ahead? I think uh, we have to recognize that uh, there is no one cause for the for the current account deficit having grown so large. There are multiple causes and all of them have to be addressed. Gold is a significant cause and uh, therefore any decline in gold ex imports is obviously going to provide some relief. Uh, but this was a very dramatic fall from uh, around over 100 tons in the previous month to about uh, 38 or so tons uh, in June. Uh, now I think we have to look at that carefully and see whether that's uh, signaling a change in direction uh, or there is a one-off kind of adjustment and whether this is a reflection of lower demand which would be uh, obviously very relieving or a rechannelization of supply which uh, will cause other problems. So I don't think we uh, have uh, the basis to make that judgment yet. Uh, but gold is certainly a factor and to the extent that uh, gold imports are going down that provides some relief. The other positive news on this is the resumption 
to some degree of iron ore uh, production in Karnataka. Uh, iron ore exports have dropped dramatically since the enforcement of uh, the environmental regulations which brought uh, mining activity uh, down to very low levels uh, over the last couple of years. Iron ore, as you know, is a very big export item, particularly to China. And uh, if that resumes, at least starts to go back to its, its, uh, its uh, earlier levels, uh, because mining is resuming under uh, closer uh, supervision and monitoring of environmental compliance, uh, that will obviously also add some relief. But I think that process needs to be speeded up. And then we have coal. Uh, we're importing enormous amounts of coal uh, when we should be producing it. Uh, we all know what's happened to uh, private mining licenses. But I think somewhere that process of getting new activity, new coal mining activity going very quickly uh, has to resume. So I think all of these are, are areas where uh, the government can take action to, to signal. Uh, things are not going to change overnight, but at least to signal that uh, steps are being taken to curb the current account deficit. And I think that's also then going to shore up and supplement the kind of uh, administrative actions or the periodic, uh, the occasional intervention that is done to manage the short-term uh, volatility. Mm. Mr. Gokhan, you, you, know, you have been associated with the RBI. The, the recent criticism of RBI has been that despite having decent reserves, it has not done enough to defend the currency. You know, a lot of people believe that maybe RBI should have had uh, a fund just to tackle uh, uh, the rupee volatility. Uh, your comments on that, sir? You can't uh, change uh, policy paradigms overnight. Uh, if at some point a decision was taken that the rupee would be uh, predominantly floating currency, uh, reserve accumulation strategies are contingent on that, uh, that position, that view. Uh, if you decide that the rupee is going to be a managed currency, then you should have accumulated reserves uh, to support that uh, position. Uh, but uh, having decided that it was a floating uh, uh, currency or a predominantly floating currency, uh, you can't overnight say, well, sorry, you know, uh, we were wrong and we want to uh, change track uh, immediately. Mm -hmm. That's not possible. So reserves and the, cur the exchange rate policy are two sides of the same coin. Now, of course, there are situations, as we've seen, not just this time. This time is particularly bad, but we saw this twice, as I said, in August 2011 and again in uh, March uh, onward, March 2012, uh, that there's enormous pressure. And there's always this, uh, this clamor to uh, now rush to the defense. Mm. But uh, as uh, has often been said, and I, I, I think this is, this is the right view, that uh, a failed defense is better than no def uh, is worse than no defense. Uh, mm -hmm. That uh, if you run down reserves to a point where your ability to uh, to meet even short term obligations is suspect, uh, that is really going to put enormous pressure on the currency. And we've seen country after country in the past where after having made a defense but not uh, not succeeded, uh, the depreciation actually goes completely out of control. Uh, so I think the, there is a judgment to be made here. And uh, once you've decided the currency is a floating currency, uh, defending it uh, is not necessarily the, the right thing to do. So that, that is the judgment that, uh, mm. that I think was made. Your views were echoed by uh, the Governor Subarao as well earlier on, um, uh, Dr. Gokhan. But, um, and we do know that you know, currency intervention is rarely trend reversing. Uh, there is some talk now that uh, not just India, but many Asian uh, uh, central banks might, look, uh, might resort to hiking rates in order to defend the currency and because of re-emergence right. of inflation worries. Do you believe yeah. that this could be the order of the day where uh, uh, hiking rates would be prudent to defend the Indian currency? Uh, it's an interesting point, actually. I think uh, the I'd argument that higher rates will create now uh, a, a more uh, attractive differential between uh, Indian paper, Indian securities, and, and U.S. securities, for example, will help to uh, generate some inflows. Uh, but that rate decision cannot be made exclusively on this basis, I think. You have to keep in mind uh, the other factors that would influence it. And in our case, it's essentially the fact that uh, growth is, uh, is sluggish, uh, that there appears to be a significant amount of, uh, of uh, capacity, uh, slack capacity, at least in some sectors, unfortunately not across the board, which, which keeps the inflationary pressures uh, sort of visible. Uh, so I don't think the, the judgment about uh, the rate can be made solely on the basis of whether it will now help to reverse the currency, because there's no guarantee that uh, just the interest rate differential will bring 
uh, money being bring flows back into the country. I think that uh, sort of more uh, a holistic kind of view has to be taken, keeping in mind, of course, the growth inflation balance issue that we're seeing. All right, Mr. Gokhan, we leave it that. Uh, thanks a lot for your time. Uh, that was uh, Dr. Subir Gokhan uh, saying that uh, you know the RBI policy on uh, rupees can't be changed overnight. This is Network 18, and you are watching CNBC TV 18.